Welcome to Caseback Watches. My name is Tim and in this episode I'd like to present you two watches. The first one is the Heinrich Taucher 2. Heinrich is a very common old school forename in Germany. It's like Bob. Bob's watch and so I was a bit reluctant when Wolfgang Heinrich the founder showed up and asked me if I want to review review his Taucher 2 which means Diver 2 watch he has the prototype and I said or thought ah, the name is pretty much the opposite of cool of coolness but then I saw the logo and that's a real great logo with a lion and then I realized okay Heinrich back then was the name for kings and very, very powerful people. And so I knew then, okay, that's the direction. And I've learned something um, in contact with microbrands and the founder of microbrands, they are enthusiasts. I mean, we all have this cliche in mind that you can put something together. Cases from China, some cheap movements, you put it together and then you make quick money. But my experience tells me something else. Very often there are really watch geeks behind microbrands. I mean this in a good way. And Wolfgang Heinrich sent me lists with alterations for the prototype with things he wants to do and things needs to be done and really a list with knowledge and thinking behind it. And so I knew, okay, a big dive watch is not exactly my favorite genre in the watch world. But I'm absolutely convinced that that guy has made something great and I'm absolutely convinced that a lot of you guys will like that watch. And so let's check out the Heinrich Taucher 2, but allow me a little invitation as always in case you're new here. Every Friday I do these longer videos here with watches in the studio and every Monday then it's time for watch of the week. Those are brief reviews of recently introduced timepieces. And if you don't want to miss any form of content here then please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, then you get your notifications. And now let's carry on with the Heinrich Taucher 2. There is really some thinking in it and some details to spot and so discuss. And so let's begin with the, with the basic measurements here. We have a case diameter of 41.5 millimeters. The length overall is 43 millimeters. A lug width is 20, height 14. We have a ceramic dial, yep, a ceramic dial, ceramic bezel insert. Here we have 120 clicks. We have box shaped um crystal this is a sapphire here very very nice see this 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 ring here metal ring ceramic insert so very substantial substantial excuse me and inside we find the sw the solita sw 201 with a date there will be available also a no date position excuse me a no date version but then without a ghost, ghost position here we have a metal bracelet with these nice zenith vintage like uh, gaps here so that you can see the wetsuit of the diver or his skin or his arm here you see the logo again nicely done i must say very nice look at this very very cool very cool cool line here you have it again very small but i really like this here pretty 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 nice and it is really a dive watch because it's waterproof up to 200 meters thanks to the construction and the screw down crown and now let's operate it. Screw down crown as set. Position two puts the hands out of the way or moves the hand out of the way. Position one now is for the date. Everything fine there. Let's close it again. This works really nice, especially the mechanism here. And the Bezel action also is very nice, not too strong, not too loose. Some of those models are super tight and a diver once told me that it's impossible or very hard to use them underwater. Underwater you need something a bit more loosely so that you can manipulate it easily. And the second feature I'd like to show you is that um, you have this, um, here you can open the, the bracelet. See this? Top notch here, top notch decoration on the clasp and you also have when you want to use it over your wetsuit then you can make it longer just by doing this with this quick set here i don't know the exact term in english to be honest taucherverlängerung in german taucherverlängerung man 
close your taucher verlängerung like this and then you can wear it out of the water so very very nice and very nice also is of course the case form and the transition here between case and this 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 bracelet here it's just well done and he wants to even improve this and so before i put the watch on the wrist let's study the dial a bit more because it's interesting it's kind of busy a lot of loom as you may see here date position on six i just love legibility is okay it's not super great to be honest although when it's dark uh maybe i'm too picky here but the look is interesting it really looks like this this secret underwater station floor of the ocean manned by evil villains and so it gives, yeah <laughs> it's very very nice to look at ah let's put it on the wrist i'm really in the mood to put the thing on the wrist now 17 centimeter wrist 41.5 millimeter watch so you see yep a bit too big but again wearable because it's not super long the case is not long we have our 43 millimeters and this works in a way and here you see the effect of this of this bracelet with those nice gaps a bit of a weakness is that the polishing job here is not top notch uh, there's a bit scratchy and a bit uneven but um, i cannot say if this is a prototype issue or not so we have to be a bit yeah yeah a bit not not um, overly picky with that aspect here but it's a nice look it's a really nice look imagine the beach imagine a gentleman with a with a, with a, with some sort of blue on him and so yeah this really works i think okay price and availability now the watch will be on kickstarter in june around june and the early bird price will be a smidgen over 800 euros those are roughly 880 us dollars bit on the pricier side but i think if you take in consideration all the specifications and the and the materials i think it's kind of justified okay welcome back and before we go to the next watch little announcement after the light box i will um, give you an update regarding our project the 470 watches here on caseback watches last week we've sold three custom made dials implemented in seiko five watches in three hours and yeah we have quite a debate now and i'd like to yeah inform you about our plans there and now let's go to the next watch this is the red star a red star bullhead chronograph and that watch I didn't order, but the owner is Julian Kampmann from Polio24. And he gave me the watch as a loan and he said, um, this is one of my favorite pieces. It's on the wrist since weeks now. It's very affordable, it's good looking, it's innovative in, his, uh, in its form, if you will so, because bullhead chronograph. So very interesting. And again, smidgen too big for me, maybe smidgen too loud, but I bet that some of you guys really can enjoy this watch. And so let's carry on here. Okay, and here we are with the Red Star Bullhead Chronograph. And I think I don't have to explain why this baby is called Bullhead, because of course here is the crown and here are the pushers. And so let's go over the basic measurements first. We have a case diameter here of 42 millimeters. Length lock to lock is 45. Height is 14.5. We have a mineral glass here, 18 millimeter lug width. And inside we have a seagull caliber. This is the seagull ST19. You find this movement in many chronographs from, from China. And it's basically the remake of a Venus caliber. And in my opinion, it works well when you have a good one. There are some unregulated pieces, but when you buy them in good condition, then they can perform well. And the entire construction here is waterproof up to 50 meters. It comes on a matching strap and you see that this strap is made extra for this watch. You have the lug width here is 18, but the edges of the strap measure 20 millimeters and it matches the, 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 the blue here of the dial, as you may see. And so very nice combo. If you like your blue, then this is really something, yeah, something to consider. And it's a very affordable watch with 300 euros. And people often say, well, I find it um, from a source in, in Asia for, let's say, 200 or even less. And that's, that might be true. But if you buy this in Europe, then you want your two years warranty. You want after sales service and something like that. And this is expensive. 
And so um, when you buy this from a reliable source in Europe or in the US, for example, or in Canada, I think it's a bit more expensive than AliExpress. It has to be more expensive. But now let's have a look on the dial here. We have this nice sunburst blue. We have here the seconds. There is a 30 minute counter. We have a red star and we have a tachymeter scale. The watch is very legible. I mean, the, the subdials are a bit dominant with this bright color, but it gives, of course, a vintage Tag Heuer look. And at the same time, it doesn't look aged in every form. And so I really can imagine why people like this design pretty much. And operating the watch, um, you may wonder if this is comfortable. In fact, it's pretty easy to wind the watch. The Seagull caliber here is the hand wound movement, and this feels feels okay. By the way, it's a good looking, good looking baby. I mean, here, here you are. This is really a good looking movement. It's not super decorated and super luxurious, but every time I see this, I think, wow, this really looks like a watch movement, like a hard working, good looking watch movement. And so very nice. And the chronograph works as usual. Push a one, starts it push a one stops it and then here you can reset the chronograph and the overall manufacturing quality really is there there are no sharp edges there are no spots visible spots where you can say wow this is a little bit sloppy here you have the crown and the pushes and everything looks really 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 nice i must say and it's a good strap it smells a bit but not too bad but, but i'm spoiled with my own strap so don't don't take this too serious here okay but now let's put it on the wrist and there we are you see big watch makes an impression definitely a statement on the wrist and it's pretty comfortable to wear because of the position here the position of the pushers nothing nothing um, hurts me here nothing makes indentations and so this is this is really nice i think i've forgotten to operate the watch let's do it position one very simple and then you can just move the hands this works well no problem at all and that's how to operate that watch very very simple yes nice one bit too big for me especially if you see here the clasp this is pretty massive that thing so a bit too big, but I really see the point why many people like this design here. Okay, and now it's time to speak a bit about our collaboration, the 47.0 and case back watches. We've sold last week three of um, Cormac's watches, so modded or let's say handmade dials together with Seiko 5 models, three watches. We've sold them in uh, three hours and Cormac was blown away by the success. Absolutely blown away. And he showed me messages from his kids, adult kids, and they were so sweet. They said something like, Daddy, we're so proud of you that you could turn this difficult situation. He suffered a stroke. That you can turn this difficult situation in, 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 in this, this project. And now people really buy your watches and value your work. And that you're cool again. <laughs> I think I've made up this again, to be honest. But they wrote something like that. And then I was damn proud that I can be um, a supportive part of that with the channel. This is really, really a nice feeling. But we have some, we had some critics, to be honest. And criticism number one, the watches were way too cheap, way too cheap. And um, I think oh, I will read the comment. Um, this is strong stuff here, but I think we have the time timestamps. And this is from Richard. I'm going to be a bit critical, a bit. He is going to be very critic here. I'm not a big on i'm not big on hippie love yourself books but if you don't value yourself why should others i think it's disrespectful to a craftsman downright criminal actually that these original artisan pieces were priced at 350 utterly absurd not saying 3500 but somewhere north of 350 it really makes me quite angry yeah richer we can we can notice this how many seconds after you released the vid where the watch is sold and did one person buy them all the answer to that question might give you pause for thought. No, it were actually three people, but Richard, you're right. The calculation was a bit naive, absolutely. But as said in the last video, I don't see this as the 
full-time hardcore business. This was meant to, as a start, to give us some motivation, to give comics some, some motivation. But of course, you're right, this was, was a bit naive. And I mean, I personally, I have a day job, I have the channel, I have, I have the shop, but times are changing here pretty, pretty fast in, in Europe, let me tell you this. And Comic is under way more pressure and he's a bit limited because of his health condition. And so I think it's very important that this project has one day a solid foundation, a solid business under it to support it, to support us and yeah, to make things possible. And the next criticized aspect was that we used Seiko 5 watches. Um, Honestly, I like those watches. I have a Seiko 5 myself and I, I find it's a really, really good watch. But when you want to create something, something more luxurious and more yeah, defined, of course, then it might be not the best choice. Maybe it's good to step up the game a bit. And then I said to Cormac, look, we buy nice cases, we buy Miyota movements, and then I sponsor high quality leather, leather straps. And then we have something really good with sapphire regulated movement and this, these, these wonderful dials. Then we have really, really, really something to sell and with, well, with um, proud to sell, to be honest. And uh, he was like, Miota, ah, Miota. And I asked, why not? Why not? People know these movements. They're good. They do the job. And brands like Baltic, they use... Miotas too, where's the problem? And he was, ah, no, I, I live 70 kilometers from the Swiss border and in the watchmaking school, watchmaker school, we, are, we, we, we train with, with Celita and EDA and Swiss made movements and, and I'm, I know them by heart and I love Swiss movements. Then I realized the guy is not, uh, I'm not able to push him in direction Miota and so we go Swiss. And so the plan now is, the plan now is to present you every season three designs, three dial designs. Two um, designs from the last batch, which were super popular, and always one new design. So in a year, the designs are circling through, and so we have always something fresh. And we will pair them with Swiss-made movements, maybe German-made cases. We're not at the end of the planning here, obviously, but this is the, yeah, this is the plan for now. But of course, it's a risky decision. And to be honest, I'm damn sure that from a business perspective, the Miyota is the better choice. But I think a motivated, highly motivated Cormac is more valuable than a good business concept. And he's drowning me with ideas now. It's absolutely amazing what people can do with motivation behind them. It's absolutely amazing. And so I'm really looking forward to present you now every season three wonderful watches. But I really like to ask you for your support. I mean, Richard was pretty bold with his words, but he's right. And sometimes you need that kind of input, not always this, ah, we love what you're doing or what you do. Sometimes you really need people who say, this is shit, <laughs> do it the other way. And the last criticized point was, the, was our terms on conditions. I, I know it was a bit stupid. I just said the watches are online now, then three people bought them. And for example, uh, viewers from the United States were still sleeping. So this was a bit unfair. We will handle this um, differently in the future. Then I will just announce a few days in advance that, we, that we're going to sell those watches and then everybody has a fair chance. But it's, it's a bit um, yeah, difficult because we have a lot of viewers here from the United Kingdom, um, a lot of viewers from the United States and a lot of viewers from Australia. So we have the entire globe here. And yeah, that's difficult to handle, but on the other hand, it's a, it's a, it's a great pleasure to, to have it that way. Okay, and that's all for this video, guys. Thank you very much again for your support. It's really appreciated. And if you want to have your sneak previews and if you want to see watches and other things I find interesting, then you can join me on Instagram, casebeck underscore Tim. And now let me thank you very much for your attention um, during this long video here and until next time.